anyway, for everyone that's watching, he is uh, his resume is quite impressive. He's got uh, how many designations behind your name here? CFPBA, CLU. I don't even know what some of these mean. EPC. Good for you. That's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so Jeffrey's been in the financial services industry for over 20 years, along with a successful practice. Jeff has been proud of helping like-minded advisors and planners succeed in his industry. Over 15 years of management and coaching advisors to achieve personal and professional success. An accomplished speaker who values working with individuals, families, and business owners, uh, solving financial challenges and concerns. Many times solving problems these people don't even know exist, uh, which is very important because that happens a lot. Though so spending time with his family is his greatest joy, Jeff's passion is people. Whether clients or fellow advisors, Jeff's mission in life has been to make others successful because his opportunities don't happen, you create them. And I couldn't agree more. Um, so thanks so much for being here. I look forward to your presentation as well. And I'll be back towards the end just to wrap up, do a thank you and help you with any questions that you might have. Um, so thanks again for being here. We really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you, Rachel. I appreciate the opportunity to help effectively. It goes back to a very central core of my why. That's It's a great segue. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I'll leave you to it and I'll be back towards the end. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so thank you again, everybody, uh, for, for attending this. It looks like there's a lot of great um, uh, sessions and so forth and speakers and taking the time to listen to uh, what I was hoping to share here today. And for those who are listening, an opportunity to feel uh, and understand a background as to why we are be, uh, staying as independent advisors and keeping that core of an independent advisor in today's competitive environment essential to the success of not just yourself as the advisor, but those who you represent as clients and prospects in the industry. So I'm gonna flip over to my presentation. Let me uh, work my magic here. And I say that with a lot of sarcasm because I do believe that would be it here. Okay, and I'll do this from the beginning. So thank you very much again. My name is Jeff. Gregory. Jeffrey is when I'm in trouble, so I do prefer going by Jeff. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Yes, I do have a, a few letters after the end of my name. That just usually means that I was really good at taking a test when need be. I'm a certified financial planner with Desjardins Financial Security Independent Network. A little bit about me. Uh, so I have been in the industry for over 20 plus years. Um, I do focus a lot within the family and business market myself. That is my daughter, uh, which I will show you where this kind of comes into play a little bit later. Uh, I do, uh, even though I don't believe that anyone ever kind of manages uh, independent individuals, I assist and help a lot of these advisors within our group here as well, 15 of them directly, but overall about 200 within our areas uh, from the East Coast to Ontario. So. I am a quarter of the table member with MDRT. Uh, happy to uh, talk about that. And if it is a goal of yours, a very, a very astute organization. So MDRT, uh, not to give them a little bit of kudos, but I like to, because they are very, very helpful for an independent advisor, not only stay independent, but really take that sense of advice and take it to another level for people. So my, my conversation was not to focus around the, you know, the Simon Sinek, if you have had the opportunity to read his book, the Start With Why, this is not what this is meant to be. However, there is components of his book around these three questions, the why, the hows, and the whats, that do have uh, components into what we need to think about as to why we are still and wanting to be financial advisors. The independent financial advisors never come under a harder storm of competition and, and questioning than ever before, it, whether it be uh, what you earn, uh, the, uh, the, the articles out there, the outside competition, we know the, the situation going on with AI. AI and that, it, to me, that is fantastic opportunity for us as independent advi advisors to show even greater our why and why we are here for people at a time when Canadian society 
doesn't really educate people very well in the means of financial advising. So I thank Simon. I am not using any of his uh, book or anything in my conversation, really because I don't want to give him any royalties. But I'm going to start with, with why. And, and the trick is finding your why. When I am talking to a lot of my fellow colleagues and, and helping them, you need to find your why as to why you became an advisor. A lot of times, a lot of people got into this industry indirectly. This was not necessarily your first choice, maybe if you are a second generation advisor, but a lot of us got into this industry by, by chance, by introduction, by a default, second career, or so forth. But let me tell you my story as to why I am an advisor as well. I originally got into this industry because uh, I could not uh, become a police officer, which was originally my first intention, and got into this. So took the courses and all that other stuff. And, you know, I, I thought I was knowing things uh, relatively younger and not as much gray hair as I have now. The story goes like this, though, and it, this, my why was not found from a book. My, my why was found from a situation that happened to, uh, to a friend and client of mine. Young family, Rui was uh, a driver, long haul driver, uh, very young family. Child was two, three years old, uh, young wife, nice house, starting to build. But because of what he needed to do, be able to provide, he was on the road quite a bit. And it's very exhausting uh, and very trying to be into that profession. You have to be able to stay awake and, and of course, to be able to make a little bit more money. Sometimes you would push the elements of what you're supposed to do. So I had the opportunity to talk with Rui quite a few times about Simple things, his mortgage insurance and, and, and some other planning and education planning and all that. But I wasn't really talking to Rui or, or listening at that point. I was trying to show off how smart I was, uh, which I think is a, a bit of a mistake that many of us have probably made quite often. What eventually happened though, Rui had, uh, after talking a few times and delaying and it, I really wasn't getting to, to his motivation to do something, even though he loved his family <clears throat> and did everything right. After a very long, long day uh, on the roads and so forth, Rui decided that uh, he needed to relax. And for those, uh, if you've ever been on long car rides with, with kids or family or anything like that, it can be quite exhausting. So he decided to uh, have a bath to relax. And unfortunately, he fell asleep and, and passed away. Um, at that point, it created mass uh, problems for the family. They did have some, some stuff in place, but it became very difficult due to the conditions of his passing, whether to get stuff approved. Uh, it was at that moment I realized my why. I had an opportunity to actually do something to help this family, and not only with the knowledge, I, I shouldn't have been showing somebody what the knowledge was, what I should have been doing was actually helping them understand their situation so they made the collective decision. I lost my why in the beginning. I thought it was about trying to get the clients and build a business and blah, blah, blah. And that, that, that wasn't my why. My why is really, is helping people and, and taking those opportunities and trying to have those conversations. I realized that it doesn't matter what I know, it's, it's how I use that to better people. So I was very fortunate very early to have that experience. And I think everybody on this call has probably had that opportunity somewhere in their life, whether as an independent advisor or not, we have to kind of reflect back as to why I stay independent because I don't want to be uh, a product pusher or anything like that, which, which I think is very important to stay an independent advisor. You want to be able to find your why. Now your why may have been to make a lot of money in this business. That that is up to you, up to you. My why was was to be more of a of an aid and a helper. And if you are somebody who want to make a lot of money in this business, we're going to touch upon how that can come into play to your benefit. Because I don't think there's a right or wrong. It's just how you want to be that advisor in this industry. So when everything starts with communication, you know, um, I've been married for for quite a while, and obviously it is the foundation of a successful relationship. However, that communication with self needs to start. That communication when um, having an understanding and, and having a deep thought as to why 
you are still doing what you're doing. COVID has brought out a lot of challenges that was never in a book. It's never been taught to us about how to battle these things. And I think the communication with self has to start first and to ensure that your value system of why you are being an independent advisor maintains itself. So going back to the head, heart and hand concept, if you're very, if you are familiar with this, <clears throat> this might flow a little bit easier if it is something relatively new. It, uh, uh, it, I think it will, it will play itself out, right? But I do like to follow this example when talking to a lot of my colleagues as well as a means of understanding the purpose of what we do. The head being the intellectual, the logical side, we do everything. The heart, of course, being the emotional and hands. How do we implement all this stuff? So let's take a look at this in an independent advising model. When you look at the head side of it, you, the questions you wanna be having is, what is the logical reason that you're an advisor right now? What, what made you want to be this? Was it because there was nothing else to do? But as time has gone on, why are, why are you still trying to do what you are doing? Is it, is it to provide for your family? Try to understand logically what those steps are. And then you get to the emotional side, okay? This, this is the part where how do you feel when you know you've done a good job or, or you're helping or, or so forth? That, that inner feeling, that why, about why you're an independent advisor, why you feel that, that sense of choice and, and freedom to make decision and to work with the people you want to work with and so forth. How does that kind of work within your why? And of course, the hand part being how do you implement what the head and the heart are thinking right about now and to try to get into the business model and to try to get those like-minded individuals that you wish to work with. So take a look at a bit of it in a sales model, okay? In a, in a sales model, I usually use a very similar description when trying to, to work with clients and prospects and, and think about why clients work with you because it will show you a bit of your why. First of all, we start with the logic. Common focus of most advisors is around the logic. We're always wanting to show, and I, did, I do the fallacy myself. I wanna show how smart I am. I wanna talk about the alphas and the betas and the rates of returns and cash value strategies and so forth, because that, that actually shows that we have credibility. But it comes down to the next part that, that I think really does focus on the why and something to, to ensure as you, uh, within the advisor and talking with your clients or prospects, is why people will react on the recommendation. It needs to satisfy that need and want sensors. <clears throat> you wanna have a, a feel good or, or a call to action. Uh, I'm always a, a believer of, you can never sell anybody anything in financial services because we don't have anything to sell, but you do have people that wanna buy what, you, what you're recommending. So we have to focus around the, the emotions uh, because they're very important for all future dealings. And then from that point, it's the hands-on with the clients. That's the implementation part that you're trying to do. Now step that back a little bit in the exact same process we do in the sales model to try and get our clients in process and do it with yourself now, because this is those challenges now when we've been independent, we've been alone, COVID's been a challenge, compliance is getting really high and to come back and to stay focused on what we do. And it comes back into, into the conceptual side of it. So again, on the compassion side, what is the purpose? What is the purpose for you? What is the purpose for you doing what you do to people in society? And take that time and, 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 and think about why you're here. Is it to provide uh, betterment for, for uh, young families? Is it to provide group benefits to, to people because you know that there's a missing gap there? No, what, what is that purpose? When you figure out what that purpose is, it's what you need. Uh, what do I need to know to feel good about that job? What is the education levels that you may need? What's the enhancement? What, what's gonna make you be a, a, a trusted resource within what you are doing to these people and those focuses? And then of course, the last part is, who are you talking to and how are you talking to them? This becomes a little bit of a challenge with the why for the independent advisor, in my opinion. Because who are you talking to right now? Well, I just mentioned talk to self, but there are some other people I would recommend that you do when you're trying to find your why that you do take advantage of. And 
again, I was very fortunate in my career very early on that I had some really good mentors. I had some individuals who, who I was able to connect with and an understanding of what my was, because there were other people within, uh, within our offices that some of them were money-oriented people, some of them were insurance-oriented people, as uh, Mark was referencing in the beginning about how some people like to focus their practices. I was more of a planning type of guy. And there were one or two um, older advisors who I was able to ask and get some advice from, not only from my value sense and my why, but even understanding how to do certain things. So mentoring becomes a very uh, essential and helpful system in trying to find your why. Where can you find mentoring? I think forums like this that Mark and Toronto Jobs that's he is putting on are a fantastic opportunity to start talking to those who might have like-minded and can help assist get to finding that value and then finding those type of people that you want. There are other organizations within our industry that could be very, very resourceful that uh, if you're not utilizing, take a look at. Uh, Advocus is one that does come to mind. The independent financial brokers, they do have a lot of mentoring style programs, MDRT. The idea of the mentoring and helping you find your why is to help communicate what you are effectively trying to work on. Who are those people and those networks and those, those individuals that you need to feel valued within your business so that you can have a successful career and that you are dealing with the people that you want to deal with? It is very hard to be the master of everything. In fact, I'm not even sure it can happen. I'm one who's uh, always tried and, and it doesn't work. So one of the things that my mentoring, and I'm gonna share this a bit with, with everybody here, uh, my mentors helped guide me and suggested to me, and take this back as maybe some, some food for thought in the independent advising channel, is instead of trying to be something for everybody, what you really need to do is when you figure out why you are here and what you are here to do, then take a couple of sectors that those primarily involve your, your, your interest and your care for, and focus on trying to help those people. So I'll give you mine. I try to recommend to a lot of the people that I do uh, coach and mentor uh, as well is just take three bubbles. Take three bubbles and these would be the areas that you're gonna know really well and you're gonna be most comfortable with talking to and representing. First one for me was my family market. I myself, and please do not laugh, have six kids. Um, I am, a, I think, a good financial planner. I can't say I'm a good family planner. Uh, but with that, my, my, my family mark and my understanding and my need to help families in a very challenging and difficult world with their financial advice when it's really hard to get good, prudent financial advice. Then I focus on the areas of disability. My daughter, who you saw in the first picture there, is actually, uh, she has autism. So I've been very involved and, and you don't really get much learning until it's hands-on learning and realizing there was a, a large missing gap in the communication and planning around autism here, not only in Ontario, but in Canada. Uh, so it took that as within my why and why my value system to implement that more. And the other part is investments. I, the whole world of investments and my why is helping people make money seeing that that uh, positive statement when they see their statement and things are up and um, and all that stuff has always been an interest of mine. So my why was effectively trying to help people discover uh, some sense of comfort, not pure wealth. That's just not what I am. Um, I'm not a, a high net worth individual. I'm just trying to help people navigate and get their money working as hard as they do. So if there is something that I can help mentor, and if you are trying to find your why and within your own business, once you figure out what your why is, find out what your three bubbles are you now, and then try to focus in those areas of your business if you're looking at expanding and growing. With that recapping, because I know there are a lot of great speakers, I'm hoping everyone gets a, a chance to do a network and hopefully find a few mentors from on this call here today. But recapping your why, the head, is the reason why you're a financial advisor and, and have that conversation within your head. Have that, com that communication as to exactly why I'm still here. It brings you back and it grounds you. The heart, why are you doing 
what you do. Why? Well, what is that that sense of feeling and purpose that you're getting? And how does that make you feel? And if you come out of that feeling, uh, the, the warm feeling, the exhausted feeling even, if you are into that whole why deep within a conversation of a client, you are exhausted by the end of that meeting. That means that your why is being fulfilled. And the hands part, after you understand the why, how am I going to implement this in my career? And what are those uh, expectations that you want to achieve to be happy? With that, I do thank you. Hopefully, it was a little bit of food for thought for everybody. The independent advisor is going to be a bit of a dying breed. We are becoming older. The average age, I think, is around 60 now, if I'm not mistaken. So it is a, an industry that is, even though it's 50% of the advising network, it does need some, uh, some uh, minor leagues to start coming up. And I'm hoping that this may help for those who have that concern. Um, I now go back to being live and see if anyone has any questions. And I may have moved a little fast for Rachel. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Very good. That was great. That was a lot of content uh, in a very short time. So thank you for that. I know it takes a long time to prepare. So really appreciate it. Not a problem. I apologize if I sounded like the micro machine man. I try not to talk that fast, but you're right. Yeah, your, your delivery was great. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions, you can place them in the in the chat here. I know that even though it's you're not people aren't showing their face they're still shy to and this is you know more of a salesy type thing but people still get a, a little shy about asking questions so um but yeah so you've been in this business for a very long time i have been i was uh i had full hair uh dark hair i was thinner all those good things you know when you started <laughs> and then uh, uh age cropped up so yes quite a while you See still have time. lots of hair it looks like so yes <laughs> <laughs> well we really appreciate it yeah, we really appreciate you being here. Um, you know, maybe you could just recap um, for those because I know we have a, a number of people still watching. Like, um, you know, I know you you're, you talked about understanding your why and kind of, you know, digging in and really understanding why you're doing what you're doing. But, um, you know, over the course of, of the pandemic, everything's changed. I, I know I'm I'm getting exhausted. The way I'm dealing with clients is so much different. You can't interact with people. You can't, you know, what, what are your, you know, what are some ways that you've kind of overcome um, the changes that have happened over the last year, like from your perspective? Yeah. And, I, and I'm noting this, noticing this more and more is that the advisors are, are somewhat having some reluctance to contact people because them themselves are having a hard time dealing with this. We, we're designed to have to be that leader to people. We're, we're meant to be that that person who helps guide them into many things and they'll contact us for for many different types from uh where do i invest my money to i'm looking at getting okay. new windows in my house but what happens is we're the sometimes you're the advisor because you don't have that that association with others uh i don't uh unfortunately I hate to hear of people stuck at their home and, and still doing that now some advisors do very well with that but they still have that social interaction that Zoom and meetings and so forth don't do that. So this is where my recommendation is uh, when trying to find your why, make sure that you still remember why you're still doing this. You're still here to help people, still stay communicated, but also try to find a bit of a network as, a, as an outlet to help through this period. Um, I think one of the concerns I have for my industry is believe it or not, the mental health side uh, with this now, because it is very, very difficult not only to be responsible for a lot of people's money, but also the isolation that this is now becoming. So as long as you still remember why you're still doing this and, and compliance and the stresses and everything going on, <clears throat> you should still be fine in, in to try and help simplify what you need to do. For sure, yeah, things have just shifted so much. And even though, you know, you can be super resilient and you can be, you know, have the mentality of, uh, you know, you think you have the best, but it's it's still tough every day to not be able to, to see people. So it's been, uh, you know, it's been a challenge, that's for sure. I'm in a business development role. I'm used to going out and meeting people and seeing people and we used to do live events. And yeah, it's uh, it's been tough. So you have six children, that's uh, also an obstacle. <laughs> Yeah. That's uh, good for you. That shows some resilience right there. Are they all doing school at home? Uh, most of them have all graduated and moved oh, on. Okay. Uh, we, the little one is doing school from home, uh, which again is also if you are 
the independent advisor. You also have to be sometimes a grade two teacher. Yeah, uh, which is another added role that can be somewhat weathering and and tax taxing, but uh, taxing there. But um, yeah, they're they're all doing good. Good. Um, you know trying to fo keep their focus on what they need to focus on. For sure, for sure. Well, that's what I'm trying to do too. So I really appreciate you being here, even though I'm not in a financial advisor position, you know, I still took away a lot from your presentation. So really appreciate uh, your time and hopefully we can see you on our platform again. Um, if anyone has any questions or they wanna learn more about you, what you do, can they reach out to you? Like is, do you have a, maybe some contact information you could put in the chat there? I do, yes I do. Amazing. Thank you for reminding me to do that. I will do the uh, the email address and the uh, phone number uh, for for those that even if you just needed to chat, uh, just vent and feel a little bit better and stuff like that. That's nice. Thank uh, you. Support systems. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Our next uh, presenters start at three o'clock. So we have about five minutes. We do have an amazing networking. I don't know if anyone's used the networking function, but um, you just have to share your audio and video and you're paired up with someone that's on the platform. So again, a, a nice way to talk to people that are in your industry, um, you know, kind of meet new people uh, that are within the financial world. So uh, definitely use that for the next five minutes. It's on the left hand side, you'll see networking. And then our next two sessions will start at uh, three o'clock. If you just click on the sessions tab, you'll be able to enter them anytime now. Um, but the, you can do the networking and then hop into the session at three o'clock. So again, thanks for being here. And uh, I hope to connect with you again soon. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day.